r slash dead bedrooms. Virtual Peak 9429 says. Are there more men or women here? I'm just curious, because I 32 female, and thought that my dead bedroom was an uncommon situation, because it's my husband in the 139 male, who has no interest in anything sexual with me. I know I see a lot of men post, but how many women are the ones getting turned down by their spouses? And how long has it been? We're at the two and one half year mark with no sex or anything. Anna Mousewith says. Female here. My husband hasn't had sex with me in 15 months. I was offered pity six, while I was in mourning I only had sex the last time, because I was pathetic, and cried about the issues to him. I decided I would rather have no sex over 3 minutes of pity sex. I've also posted once, and felt mocked by a guy and had PMS. I think that's what keeps women from posting. Hostuno says. The DMS are a huge reason women don't post. You get a ton of guys in there that start off sounding friendly and helpful, but then they start asking you for pics and things. Virtual Peak 9429 says. I'm sorry I feel like it starts to affect your mental health too. I'm getting to the point of an ultimatum. Hot Mess Mum 22 says. It's prob an even split. Lots of lurkers so hard to know. I'm 40f. Ok Shop 1154 says. Female here. Someone suggested I join after I complained about being sexually frustrated. But I'm not sure I belong in here, I do get sex a couple of times a month. I just want more. More passion. More raw sex. More kink. And I'd be happy with just a couple of times a week. My husband is never in the mood, and doesn't initiate very often. So, mentally to me it's DB, but I know I don't have it nearly as hard as others in here. And it goes Lakathus 5 says. I'd say you still belong here. Tactician 808 says. It feels a bit equal. I think lots just don't post because well. You're in bark some days. 38 female, going on 4 years of nothing. Alizabs91 says. 32F. We've had sex twice in almost 2 years. I got turned down tonight on my first mother's day. Noon loves us says. I'm 55 and the high libido wife. We've had a dead bed for at least 15 years. I'm appalled to put that in writing. I woke up about 2 years ago, and I'm focused to end my own healing. Not quite certain what that means right now. I'm glad that I found this forum a year ago, and realized there was a name for it. As a woman, it has been awful chatting with girlfriends over the years, who complain about sex with their husbands. It's been too embarrassing to admit to my situation. r slash dead bedrooms. Deleted says. Why do they make false promises? Yesterday, I, 26 HLF, woke up next to my husband, 32 LLM and asked if he wants to fool around before getting up. He said he didn't brush his teeth I offered him a BJ slash HJ, so he doesn't have to worry about his breath, and he gave me this millimeters, sounds good but I gotta get ready for work, but we could do it later he comes from work and the first thing he proclaims is how tired and headachy he is, why? Couldn't he just say no in the morning, and stop making me constantly hope for something more later in the day? Navibit1977 says. I feel it's just to drag us along with hope. Aloha Friday Knight says. They have no clue as to how soul crushing the repeat rejections are. Our significant other sees themselves as the norm, and we are not, so they don't see anything wrong. Throated Deeply says. Man book rule hash one violation, never turn down a BJ. ShyGuy8686 says. Probably because he didn't want to get into an argument at the time. Not saying you would start one, just that in his mind, it's easier to just deflect it until later. Anotm says. 
It's short-termism. The question that they, probably subconsciously, answer in their own mind, is what will get me out of this unwanted situation now? We'll deal with the next problem when it arises. That evolves into an endless loop, question, evasion, deferral, wait for the next round and repeat. The tragedy is, that they won't know how to solve it definitively any more than you do. While Dirishman says, I'm sorry. I would like to say that in the moment the later is meant. But that is on a case by case situation. And given the example provided, it certainly looks like wanting to get credit for saying yes without actually having to do anything. Imv. Squanchy Toss says. You're awfully young to have this problem. It's time to let him know that this isn't normal for you and you need to see a sex therapist. Don't just let him get away with dictating what your sex life is going to be. Insist upon it and make it a condition of a healthy marriage. You will experience this for the rest of your life if you don't make a change. Trust me having mismatched libidos will only get worse over time. Just read the posts here and see what it eventually does to your mental health and self-image. Fix the problem now and go have a happy life. r slash dead bedrooms 8039 sparks says it's over what now i hl 45 f brought up the lack of intimacy again before christmas and the whole nine year relationship just blew up our dead bedroom situation obviously bothered me the lack of real connection was the thing that made it unbearable Six days after the conversation he, LL48 meters, decided he had too much going on in life to connect properly, and that he was letting me down and, so he moved out, saying that he needs to sort himself out for a bit. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Family and friends have been amazing, but that is starting to fade as everyone goes back to work after being off. What happens now? I'm living in our home, minus all of his things, and it feels strange. I don't see a way back, despite what he said. I was never a casual sex kind of person, and I'm definitely not in a place to get into something new. I'm not sure the grass is all that greener after all. Anyone got any wise advice or stories of how thing worked out? Thanks. Icefet71 says. Seems to me that an emotionally healthy person would be responding exactly the way you currently are. It would probably be way more concerning if you were just like, frick, it and flipped a switch and didn't care at all. If I ever doubt myself in a situation like your current, I try to ask, would it make sense for an emotionally healthy person to be reacting slash handling slash responding this way in this situation? I find that the answer is almost always yes. And when it is, there's nothing much more to do than be kind to yourself and start piecing together a new normal. Inside Assistant 61 says, Him leaving doesn't seem like a great sign that he wants to fix things. Seems more like a choice of control. A real big conversation needs to happen, not him leaving and avoiding. That's not fair on you still. If you don't see it getting fixed then unfortunately it may be over. Mage in training says. I'd say it's over. Chill, reflect, and go about your new life. Don't rush into anything, maybe get a cat. A drunk 6948 says. I think a bench plan might be in place. Nine years is a long time and rather, to stay and fix it, he chose to run. Maybe this is something he had been contemplating for some time. Obviously he chose the route, that probably is better for him, and disregarding your feelings wants or needs. I know the frustrations, that come from trying to match the other L and it's very difficult, especially if you're getting the dirt end of the stick and you truly love the person. If this is something, that you've been battling and nothing gives, then it's probably best to move on. I think maybe it should be talked over about each other's expectations from this separation. Is this something you're working towards for a better connection, or for other people? Hope your situation turns around for you. Goodreef now says. Has he tried to contact you since he left? 
Melanie Umkerton says. Someone said the grass is greener where you water it, and I feel like it's so true. Water yourself and see what happens around you. When I broke up with my cheating ex, I went and did my hair, my nails, and bought some new clothes that I loved, but he would have hated. I went out and took myself out on a date. I did things like shopping, he made this a miserable experience, went to see a movie by myself, a movie he wouldn't have wanted to see, and bought myself a nice dinner. I took myself out to get treats like my favorite frappe and some little donuts that I adore. I reconnected with my friends and started to hang out with friends, I would invite them over and make lots of food for us, I loved it, my point. Focus on what you can accomplish. Learn how to love, being alone with yourself, and learn how to have fun without your partner being your main focus. Your partner is supposed to enrich your life, but a lot of people become hyper focused on their relationships, and they find that they lose their selves. Let him go off and sort himself out while you learn to love yourself once again. I know our situation is different, but I truly think you can gain from this. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.